It's the gates. Good morning. How's everyone feeling? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. We're going to talk a little bit about Sebastian Rogers, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, 15 year old boy with autism, still missing. It's been a month now, over a month, and still no sign of Sebastian. Uh, a lot of you guys know I've been out here for over a week now, about, about a week. Uh, different locations back and forth between Hendersonville, where he lived with his um, biological uh, mother, Katie Proudfoot, stepdad, uh, Chris, and Memphis. The Proudfoots are in Memphis, south of Memphis right now. They're in actually Mississippi. They're actually in Mississippi, but we're talking about just so people, people are just jumping on the case. We're talking about Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, 15 years old, still missing, still no signs of Sebastian, still no signs of Sebastian. But I have a lot of questions uh, covering this case and covering, you know, being boots on the ground and seeing everything around me and showing you and you guys seeing the you know videos that we've been putting out. Um, good morning, everyone. I see a lot of people out there. A lot of people, um, care, right? A lot of people care. A lot of people have been paying attention to this case, uh, for sure. But yes, the Proudfoots are, uh, currently at a campground, right? A campground. And it's called Yogi Bear Campground. It's actually in Horn Lake, Mississippi. Uh, they're there. They got the RV. They got the truck and they have Katie's vehicle with a picture of Sebastian taped on the side, which I thought was interesting. Uh, reason why is, you know, covering the Summer Wells case, uh, Candace Wells used to drive around with picture of her uh, Summer and her boys inside her uh, car in her glove department. It would be a, 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 a taped picture. But on uh, Katie's vehicle, there is a picture of Sebastian on the side of Flyer, which is interesting because uh, you know we were around the neighborhood of where the Proudfoots left, right? They left their neighborhood. Uh, people, some people say, did they flee or did they, uh, you know, escape or are they trying to hide? I'm not so sure. Um, uh, my, uh, honest opinion is I think Chris is trying to get back into the work situation at St. Jude's, uh, hospital in Memphis. Don't know if they gave him the green light to go to work. Don't think he's working yet. Uh, they're just kind of hunkered down. Um, I will say that, uh, the Yogi Bear people don't want people on their property. Uh, there, there was some other TikToker, uh, or, you know, around that area doing some TikTok. I don't know if you saw that. I don't know which TikTok uh, person it is or personality it is, but they're sitting around, you know, going up and, and apparently the, the, the management of that, um, RV place was like kick rocks. Go, 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 go. Yeah. It's, Yo it's Yogi Bear. Let me just show it to you on the map here. I'm a little bit uh, away. Um, let me show you Yogi Bear. It's actually called the Yogi Bear. Uh, uh, it's called the Yogi Bear uh, Jellystone Park Camp Resort in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, but a PI, a PI has reached out to me actually and said, uh, wanted to pass along some info. Chris was dead. And this is interesting because there's actually a few RVs at the time when Chris would go back and forth from the job, you know, uh, when he when he worked. There was actually a couple RVs that Christopher worked at. Uh, or stayed at while he would work in Memphis. So, you know, um, I've always thought, you know, if, if he's working in Memphis and he's going for extended periods of time, is his company or the company paying for hotels? And I'm like, eh, I don't know. You know, hotels at $100, $150 a night a shot, the expenses add up. Well, get an RV. You can't park an RV in downtown Memphis. And I don't think it's wise to park an RV in downtown Memphis at all. I don't think, um, it's advisable, right? Because we went down the streets of Memphis and you guys know Memphis. Memphis is off the chain, right? So you can't stay with your RV in Memphis. It didn't look like the St. Jude's Hospital that you could go in there at workers and park their RVs on the job site. I don't know. And, and, and let me ask you guys in reference to Chris, right? You know, he says he works as a crane operator. Is he a foreman or is Chris a, um, and I can't figure this out. If someone knows, you know, please send it in the chat. And I appreciate the help and the support. I, I just saw a message come through. Um, everything's going lightning speed. But as far as Chris Proudfoot, is Chris Proudfoot um, a foreman at his job or just a crane op? Because my mind is thinking, how in the world? If it's just a crane operator, I'm thinking salary wise, what, what, what would he make a year? What does Chris Proudfoot make a year? Uh, 70 grand, 80 grand. I mean, what do you think he makes a year? 
And how much do you think Katie makes a year? Because Katie, you know, said in her interview with Nancy Grace about the work truck, the work truck that's outside the Proudfoot home now. There's a single work truck that's actually parked on the um, side of the house. And it's actually, it's, it's in a weird position. It's like right next to the garage in the back. Some people speculate that work truck actually blocks uh, people from the back surveillance of looking in, you know, at the, at, at any vehicles coming in and out of that um, garage. But what does, the, you know, the mother works at Brinks. Dad works as a crane op or crane supervisor. People are saying crane op. What's the total salary? Because they have, they have between them a lot of little toys, right? Toys meaning motorcycles, $600,000 home, giant RV, vehicles. You heard Katie's day on Sunday, the 25th, going to buy food at BJ's. They actually went out as a group to Texas Roadhouse. I confirmed that too. The restaurant that they went to as a group, which is a mystery here because I'm, we're going to talk a little bit about that group of individuals that went to the um, Texas Roadhouse on the 25th before they before Katie drove home. And I say Katie drove home. Maybe Sebastian drove home uh, with him after the 25th, you know, after they went out to eat. But how do they get all this stuff? How, how, how do they afford all this stuff? Are they in debt or... You know, it just makes me wonder because their house and their neighborhood is nice. I mean, the neighborhood is, you know, top notch for that area. I mean, I know maybe it's a little bit out of Hendersonville, a little bit out in the county a little bit, but it's a 600, it's literally like a $600,000 home. I mean, can you guys afford a $600,000 home? I can't, I can't, I'm not on that level right now. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a big home. It's a nice home. Um, you know, Chris and Katie Prof would describe the, the home to Nancy Grace, the layout. I guess there's three bedrooms in there or something. Or was there four or three bedrooms in there? They described, the, you know, when the daughter stays there, where Sebastian's room at, where their room is at. But how do they afford all that? You know, it just makes me wonder. Or are they just, you know, debt, 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 paying off, mortgage, you know, making payments. Maybe they're not in debt. I don't know. But Chris, so when... This all this goes on, right? Right. When this thing goes on with Sebastian and, you know, he's claiming he was there for up to a month prior, right? The beginning of February 2024. He goes to uh, these, uh, you know, he goes to work, claims that he hasn't been back to the house um, until after the call for Sebastian was missing that he claims he made at around 6 20 a.m., which is very, very strange because I was reviewing some of the old videos that um, Katie made. I'm jumping all over the place because my mind is processing so much. Just bear with me, folks. There's just so much stuff to try to understand what's true and what's not true in this. Uh, a lot of weird stuff. But going back to the campground, right? The campground. The campground. I'm um, going to get some information about how much it costs tonight. Uh, to stay at that campground. Can you get on a monthly rate? Can you, you know, is it a weekly? How much does it cost? Um, surveillance in and out of the, uh, you know, in and out of these RV parks. Cause there's two. Now let me read the, let me read what uh, was sent to me information. And I'm, I'm looking into it though. Want to pass along some info. Chris was staying at one of two EV parks in Mississippi. Both are about 10 minutes from his work site in Memphis. I've asked where he stayed, he refuses to answer. Shocker, right? Here are the addresses of the two parks that he could have stayed at. One one is the Yogi Bear. And he's there. They're there. That's where they're at. Horn Lake. They're at Horn Lake. They're at Horn Lake, Mississippi, which is 10 minutes south of Memphis. And then the other was called Easy Days. Easy Days in South Haven, Mississippi on Ross Parkway. Suggestion I got, maybe check to see if, he, if they have cameras or if someone will tell you if he was definitely staying there. And that's where my mind is thinking, you know, in reference to an alibi or anything, right? <sighs> you have an RV park. Who can, like, can someone, it's not like a hotel, right? Hotel, you check in, I guess. Well, maybe it is. Maybe there's a place you check in, like, at a front before you get your spot or you just go in and reserve. Trying to find some information. We're in the preliminary stages of trying to find out details about the RV parks. Because what was Chris, where was Chris Proudfoot the 25th and the 26th? What was, I know Nancy Grace was asking Katie Proudfoot about like specific things she was doing all through the 25th 
leading up to 26 when Sebastian was reported missing by her a little after 6 a.m. Uh, or she discovered this, uh, Sebastian missing a little uh, after 6 a.m. But what about Proudfoot? What about Chris Proudfoot? Like, what did he do on the 25th? I wish Nancy Grace would have asked him. Like, what did you do step by step? Where did you go? Who did you talk to? Did you go out to eat? Did you go out to, uh, anywhere? When did you get back to your uh, spot you were at? He, all, you know, all we know is he was in Memphis. But it is, you know, it's it's the irony is the RV park that he possibly would would have been in when Sebastian went missing, the Yogi Bear uh, RV park, is coincidentally the same RV park that he's at right now, that they're at. And I say that them together. It's unclear when um, they're going to come back to their home. Uh, there has been some other people around YouTube that maybe you guys are aware or not aware of that have been going by the um, home, the Proudfoot's home. People are still looking for Sebastian a month into this. This is how much people care about Sebastian. They're still looking. And, um, you know, there's a, the Proudfoot's parents are there. The Proudfoot's parents are at least going there, checking up on things in the house while Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot are in uh, Mississippi. While in Mississippi at the Yogi Bear uh, Yogi Bear, Horn Lake. I'll show you exactly where it's on the map compared to Memphis. Yogi Bear, it's just south of Memphis. It's just south of Memphis. It's just south of Memphis. It's like literally over the state line. And the distance between that and St. Jude's Hospital, folks. St. Jude's Hospital. Now, th now, now stay with me on this because it's um interesting. It's interesting. It's actually uh, 17 miles. So he's a, he's 17 miles away from his job. So again, you got an RV. You can't park your RV in Memphis. Probably wouldn't be advisable to park your RV in the Memphis area surrounding, or, you know, around the city limits of Memphis. It's wild. It's dangerous there. So you go a little bit south. And probably Mississippi is more receptive to RVs and everything like that. I'm sure there's RV parks in, in, in Tennessee, too seen a lot of RVs all over the place. There's actually a big boat behind me in an RV. Um, but going back and forth, leave your RV there, unhitch your truck, leave. Boom, 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 boom. So, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting about Proudfoot's alibi around the 25th and 26th at one of these RV parks where his RV was staying. Like, it, okay, let me ask you something. When Proudfoot... When Proudfoot did return home after Sebastian was reported missing, did he take his RV with him? Or did he leave his RV at that spot? Trying to find some details. If people know, if anyone knows anything about like Chris Proudfoot, like if anyone's out there that stayed in those RV parks at the time, like anyone that's out at those RV parks uh, that we just mentioned, the two, like around the 25th to 26th and seeing Proudfoot around there, seeing something going on, Please go to law enforcement. Please go to law enforcement because I'm shocked to the core that according to um, Proudfoot, he didn't even take a lie detector test, which I'm like, I don't know the, whether to believe him or not. I mean, I, I don't know whether to believe Proudfoot or not when he says that uh, he didn't take a lie. I don't I don't I don't personally believe anything that comes out their mouth. I don't believe anything. Um, Nancy Grace kind of baited them. Um, you know, they were talking about, you know, Nancy kind of played a little uh, good. I, one thing I'll give, uh, I like Nancy Grace, you know, I, I, you know, her interview, she got, she was like kind of doing like hard, hardcore interrogation. We wish she would have asked a lot more questions, but we always say that after the fact, you know, in that moment, but, uh, she, she, st she got them and she caught them in a lie about the scent found to the retention pond, you know, and she like basically said, you know, about this and they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. There were no law enforcement ever said anything publicly about a, a, a scent going to a retention pond. Um, Katie's talking about a thud in the house. Katie was talking about Sebastian going to take the trash at one point. I don't know. I don't know if they're trying to say these different things that happened to kind of throw us off the trail, throw everyone off the trail, create a narrative that they want everyone to follow. Um, because I haven't seen any evidence of law enforcement saying anything about a scent going to no retention pond. So, I mean, if you know something's not true, and Nancy says it out of their mouth and they kind of validated. They're just misleading people into another direction, sending people on a wild goose chase. And, you know, that's what I see the Proudfoots. Um, they've clearly lied on numerous instances. So, you know, I don't wouldn't believe anything they say at this point. Nothing, nothing. 
I would probably only the only people I would actually believe at this point uh, if, with, with any information would probably be Seth Rogers and law enforcement. Law enforcement would probably be the only one I, at this point I would listen to um, with anything. Um, you know, Seth gets a lot of tips and he's oh man, that he's a mess, man. He's I mean, he's trying to find his son. He's just emotional. Um, he's passionate. Um, I just saw the News Nation interview he gave the other day, man. I, I, I feel so bad for him, man, because like I've personally seen him cry. Um, he's out there. He's out there looking. He's he's desperate for answers. He's desperate. Um, you know, trying to find you know where his son is. Uh, I don't see that out of the Proudfoots. I don't see that out of the Proudfoots. I don't see the Proudfoots. They're, uh, I mean, Chris is more worried about working, and we're a month into this, and no concern whatsoever where Sebastian is. Like Chris doesn't even attempt to do anything like as far as, uh, you know, bringing awareness to his own son at all, like stepson, which there's no pictures of them, by the way, not one picture exists that I've seen thus far on this case, folks, where Proudfoot is with Sebastian. Have you seen any pictures? I just posted one on my Twitter, which is interesting. It, 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 I got it. It was, it was sent to me, uh, Proudfoots are, uh, you know, they'll take a picture together, Chris and uh, Katie with a dog. They'll take a picture together with a dog, right? And Chris and Katie will take pictures together. But you don't see any pictures out there with Chris and Sebastian. Why? Is there any? Do any exist? Has Chris ever took a picture with his stepson, Sebastian? Because I haven't seen nothing. I haven't seen nothing. So let me know what you think about that. Because uh, that's kind of like, hey... How does Chris really feel about, how did Chris really feel about Sebastian? How did he really feel? I mean, we heard the belt. We heard the belt beating. Uh, a lot of mixed stories on that. Chris tells one thing. Uh, on Nancy Grace tells podcasters other. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of mistruths or omitting facts. A lot of things I want to know. This is what I want to know. This is what I particularly want to know. We have one. We have a Facebook group. We have a Facebook group centered up with this case. We have some really good mods and we try to put truth, truthful and, and accurate information. Uh, here it is right here. Join this group, please. Uh, we, we we are uh, boots on the ground and we have people at all angles, sleuths, uh, processing information, a lot of neighbors, family members, community, a lot of people in this group. And we put up to date information. Um, we got things, you know, we, we, we put through this group and one particular thing I want to share with you this morning, right? I want to share with you this morning is about, uh, it would be nice if Katie Proudfoot could give a accurate timeline of the day before Sebastian disappeared. Katie keeps reminding us in each interview how socially awkward her son is and how he didn't get invited anywhere, how other kids didn't like being around him because he didn't know personal space. For a child that didn't do anything the day before he disappeared is very public, eventful, and well-documented. Now think about that, folks. Think about that because Katie revealed on Nancy Grace. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Well, they, they said before with the Chronicles of Olivia interview that they picked up a cousin. But Katie went as far on Nancy Grace to say that when they went out to eat, when they went out to eat, they weren't just uh, Sebastian and Katie. It was two aunts and a cousin along with them, a group one. Now, there's a picture circulating out there of a group of people at Red Robin. But I can tell you, my sources have told me um, it's been confirmed and even the manager of at Texas Roadhouse. Let me just say Texas Roadhouse, um, which is a little bit away from the bowling alley. That's where I was told that they went out to eat at Texas Roadhouse, right? So you go as a group. But the, the great question is, and this person presents a question. Remember, Sebastian doesn't have friends, socially awkward. You know, now he's out and about. He's out and about Sunday with family and friends as a group. Wonder what was going on in his mind if he's like mostly isolated most of the time and then goes out on the 25th. Because I think this mystery, something transpired personally or the chain of events on the 25th have a lot to play into this. I really do. Also, you know, before, before I found out, before I found out that Katie and Sebastian went out to eat as a group. You know, 
I was at the bowling alley. And when I was at the bowling alley, I was thinking at the bowling alley. I was thinking, you know, I went in there and took video. I'm going to share some video on this channel of the inside of the bowling alley and everything like that. I'm like thinking to myself, how does a mother and just a mother and child go to this type of bowling alley? Because it looks like it's like a game fun place. It looks like a place you would send a group of people to have a party. It's like a place where you would, it's like a family event with multiple people, not just one or two people. So that's kind of makes sense to me that probably most likely the group, the two aunts, the cousin, and I, I kind of know who they are, but I don't want to say their name till I verify it. Cause I just don't, we don't, we, we want to vet things. The group, you know, that she was with, um, the group went to this, yeah, the family fun zone, like a family fun zone, but it's, it's, it's centered around a lot of people. So they went there as a group, supposedly. And then went to, out to dinner afterward. But my question is, and this is why this is the information I want to get. And I'm sure maybe you guys can provide some insight. When this group of people, Katie, Sebastian, two aunts and a cousin, when they went to this bowling alley and then out to eat, did they drive as a group? Did they go in the same vehicle as a group and travel together as a group in one vehicle? Did they get two vehicles? And follow each other. So they go out to eat. As a group. Did they meet there? And eat as a group separately? Did they separate vehicles meet there? Or did they all pick each other up? So they go as a group and eat. What did they eat? What transpired at the restaurant? Because Katie also said witnesses staff there. Staff there. Because Nancy was like, who's the last people? Who were the last people beside you to see Sebastian alive? And she said when they went out to eat. That's that's the last people. And she also said the staff of the restaurant. But you're eating there, right? What did Sebastian eat? What did Katie eat? How was the demeanor between the group? Was there any arguments in that group? Was everyone on good terms? Fighting, laughing, having a good time, eating? Was everyone just doing their own business? Remember, so Sebastian, according to the family, saw she awkward. So now my question is, after they eat, after they eat as a group, what happens then? What happens then? Did they all leave in the same vehicle? And go where? Because if you're there as a, if you're there with the people, I want to know where the other people went from that point. Did were they all there together as a group? Or did they separate their ways? Or did Katie drive this group back to their house and then drive home? back to the Hendersonville home because I can be honest. I'm always honest, right? I don't, I don't know why I said could be honest. I don't know if there's any proof Sebastian even came home that night. Like, where's the proof besides the Proudfoot saying it? Where's the proof? Like, I know that people are spreading rumors that, oh, the neighbor across the street has surveillance of them returning home. But I ain't seen nothing. So where is the evidence that Sebastian really returned home that night after they went out to eat? We got we got we got to find out the timeline, the driving route. We got to find out the driving route that Katie took from the restaurant to back home because Katie returned home, right? Katie had to return home. Katie at least returned home. She made the call. She's in the house. She claims that Sebastian made it. But where's the proof that Sebastian made it home? So did something transpire in that vehicle? Did something happen? You know, who's in the vehicle? What's the routes? I want to know more about this. And I'm looking into this more. If you have some insight, like if you have any sightings, did, did Katie stop and make any other stops that she didn't mention in her interview? Did she stop at a, she stop at a convenience store? Did she stop to get gas? Did she go make another... Um, spot, you know, I mean, because at the time, what time did they actually go out to eat? Because remember, I looked at, uh, I looked at, uh, the time on, let me, let me just, I think it was like 547 or something like that. Remember daylight savings time now, but I, I was looking at 6 PM for some reason I had 6 PM in my mind, right? Because there was rumors that 
Katie returned home with Sebastian was seen on surveillance at that house at 6 p.m., right? But I don't even know if that's true. So if you're going, so Juan, I want to know also what time did they go out to eat? What time were they actually at the place? And was it Texas Roadhouse? I'm I'm told it's Texas Ro- Ro- Roadhouse. I don't know if it's Texas Roadhouse. I'm told that. Okay. But what time was that? And what time did Katie return home? Because the sun sets, sun sets at February, I think it's 540 something, 26 Hendersonville. 539, 539, that day, that day, that day, sun sets at 539. Now, my point is, my point is, folks, that when Nancy Grace was asking Katie about surveillance around the house, remember what Katie said when it's dark at night, when it's dark at night, the neighbor's surveillance or the neighbor's ring cameras can't pick nothing up when it's dark. She said that. So the question is, what proof is there that Sebastian came home in that car after going out to eat? And what time did they eat? Because if they returned home after 5.39 p.m., it's dark. Well, you know, once sun goes down 5.39, we'll think probably about 6.15, then it gets dark, right? Someone said on there, he was seen taking out the trash. Seen by who? I didn't see anything like that. She says he took out the trash. I haven't heard anyone to corroborate that. I haven't seen anything that says that he was seen taking out the trash. This is what the mother is saying. And I don't believe anything the mother says. Anything. A neighbor said that. Which neighbor? Which neighbor said that? That's 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 corroborate. That's a, see people when people say a neighbor said that. What neighbor? What neighbor said, did the neighbor say they heard it from another neighbor? Are we talking about third hand stuff? What neighbor said that they saw Sebastian take out the trash? And maybe the neighbor, maybe the, you know, I don't know. Got to figure out the truth here besides what the Prowf would say. I don't believe a word the Prowf would say. Nothing. They've already proven they've lied numerous times. We've heard, I, I can't even go through the all, in, all the inconsistencies and not telling the truth. I don't believe anything. And as longer and longer and longer this gets, the timeline and story can change. They can change things. They can trick people, you know? I don't believe anything they say at all. I don't believe anything to say unless they actually sit down and describe step by step what they've done that day to at least understand. And then you can go vet it through. Ah, we're going to get some delicious orange juice. So there's still a lot of unknowns there. Did Chris, I know Nancy Grace asked Chris if he returned home at all prior between when he left at the beginning of um, February up to after Sebastian got reported missing. Has he been home anywhere in between? He says, no. She should have asked, has he been back around the neighborhood around that time? Has he been back in town around the time? Yeah, Chris might have left and went there, but not at the actual home, maybe down the street, maybe in the next neighborhood, maybe in the construction, maybe somewhere else in Hendersonville, maybe somewhere near the restaurant or the bowling alley. Maybe took an Uber, Ash says. You got an RV there, right? You got an RV. RV's not going anywhere. Just saying, you know, you 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 speak with Katie and Chris, confirm they spoke the night before, the night before Sebastian went missing. I mean, Chris could easily just, I don't, we don't know if he has any burner phones or maybe they don't even have a phone. But he could definitely just leave the phone in the RV, unhitch the RV and take the truck and have the phone on. Or have the phone because very first thing, these guys are smart. They know about pings. They know about pings. I know a lot of you guys out of true crime, you always think, oh, how do you get away with the perfect crime? Well, the very first thing you're going to do is ping your phone. So you leave your phone in one location and go do something else somewhere else. Right? I mean, most people that you know know about law and, and true crime know this. They're not, they're not dummies. I mean, she works, he's, the, he's military and she works Brinks security systems. They know that stuff. I just don't, I, I just, I don't, it's something very, very stinks 
with this whole situation. And to me, the prime suspects. We've always said that. And you know, we're gonna be that we're gonna be on them uh left and right. We're not going away. We're not going away. As far as searches, folks, uh, there has been no searches around here anymore. I haven't seen any uh searches going on, monitoring if there is gonna be searches. I strongly advise anyone that, you know. As far as searches, I strongly advise everyone uh, before you, you know, uh, go on a motion, understand what the search is about. Um, I strongly don't recommend anyone search unless it's like law enforcement sanctioned, unless law enforcement is involved or law enforcement calls, the, you know, help um, because there's just a lot of, uh, you know, trickery and, and scheming going on that I personally seen um, in this area. And, you know, you don't want to go on people's private property, you know, law enforcement, um, up, you know, up in that area res responds to me, some of their county responds to me. Um, I think one of their concerns is people trespassing on just anyone's property. You can't just go onto someone's property and, 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 and trespass a month into this and just say, Hey, I'm going to look because, uh, 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 someone told me to go look here. You can't just do that. Right. Um, in a lot of situations where there is a child go missing in that very critical first 48 hours, 72 hours, I think anyone should go everywhere. You should just go through the whole of the woods and it doesn't matter. And I think every resident should be understanding of that when you're prowling through the woods and everything like that. Um, but at this time, a month into it, a month into it, I don't think it's wise at all to go on anyone's property to go search uh, for something because you don't know. Like you understand who's taking you on these searches. If it's if it's a group, understand what group this is, and if law enforcement has approval uh, of this, or if law enforcement is even aware. Do not go to any secret searches. Don't do nothing. Someone directs you to do. Um, I can say, you know, the prior weekend um, at the Rockland Recreation Center, that that search was a complete disaster. Now looking back at it, because um, you know people drawing people onto a property and it ended up no one was even allowed on that property. It was like federal property and you could be in trouble. You could get in trouble if you just go and, you know, all the property owners could say, why are you on my property? Just, I wouldn't do it. I would just sit back and, 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 and you know, until law enforcement maybe gets a good tip and a law or, or if, a, if there's a search, could, you know, if there's a search going on with law enforcement, maybe they're present monitoring the situation or there, you know, uh, you know, SARs there, certified uh, search and rescue people, someone with credentials, like actual credentials there, um, searching. Um, I just wouldn't do it, you know. Um, at this point, it's, you know, I think law enforcement um, is not even entertaining any type of searches. Um, that's the way I take. They're they they're, they're not they're not involved with any searches. Um, I can say that. And I like this reporter, uh, his name's Burton Staggs. He put out a tweet and I retweeted him. I um, just want to share because apparently Equisearch is working with law enforcement. Equisearch, uh, Burton Staggs put out here, and I'm going to read this tweet right here. He put it out and he said, I can confirm that Equisearch has been active in the search for Sebastian Rogers. An Equisearch member tells me they have been working with law enforcement for weeks and continue to do so. From my personal experience with Equisearch, they prefer to work with no publicity, right? So that's good. And I believe this reporter because he does good work. He's grassroots and he's boots on the ground. He lives in the area and he's he puts out, you know, pretty good stuff. He would know this. I don't think he's putting out this. So they got Equif Equisearch working with law enforcement behind the scenes. Um, that's good when they're working with law enforcement. When you're not working with law enforcement, and moving forward on this channel, yeah, we'll monitor what's who's doing what, you know, and we'll bring awareness to who's doing what. But moving forward on this channel, I've learned a lot in the last week that I, you know, I I strongly do not advise anyone to work with a group that claims they're doing things uh, without knowing who you're dealing with, without knowing, you know. So if you decide you want to help and you decide you want to go through property and all that stuff. I would get the owners of the property. I would understand what's the objective here. What makes people believe that this is the location? Um, you know, just do your research, do your due diligence, do your due diligence. I'm not saying don't search. I'm saying that, you know, try to understand more about what's going on before you can get yourself into some a pickle, you know, and you don't want to get yourself in any, um, 
trouble, you know, and put, put people at risk. Um, I don't want to see any of you guys get arrested or get in handcuffs or get hurt or get misled or bamboozled or scammed. I just don't, I don't want to see people get scammed out there, man. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's people out there that have bad intentions. Trust me. There's people out there that have very, very, very bad intentions. They're like evil. Um, so we'll keep bringing awareness to Sebastian. Uh, you know, there is rumors circulating out there about, you know, a landfill and body work. We're, we're waiting on law enforcement. We're waiting on law enforcement to, um, you know, put that out. You know, we're waiting on, um, also Nick Barris with, um, the reporter up there actually went into Summer County Emergency Management and they showed the graph. They literally already searched in those week and a half so much acres of land within that radius of the Hendersonville home of um, the Proudfoots. I mean, they've, they've searched pretty much every nook and cranny. I, I don't, unless law enforcement says, hey, we need the public's help to redo something. I, you know, I don't think there's nothing left to search around there unless. You know, there's some, and, and even if someone says, oh, well, we got a credible tip or something like that. Well, you would think if you got a credible tip at this point to search somewhere, then law enforcement would be joining you with that credible tip. If law enforcement's not joining you with the letter, credible tip, I can't see why, you know, a, 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 you know, a loosely organized search would be good. Um, that's just my opinion on that. You know, I'm not a professional with that as far as, you know, about the searching and how the, all that works and everything like that. Um, but just do your due diligence. Um, and people own guns, too, on these properties, you know, and you're going after, a, a, you know, one thing, too, is maybe in that fluid situation, people know what's going on. But a month after the fact, you know, no one's really a lot of people, believe it or not, and it's sad, you know, people get forgot about of and and and. All the homeowners are going to see is someone going through their property, you know, walking around, looking around, staring, going through the bushes, and they might be trigger happy. They might be trigger happy. So oh, you don't want to get hurt. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to go to secret locations. You don't want to uh, go on people's pr private property. Um, some of these homeowners might not want people on their private property at all. So, but we are, we are basically hounds on the prowl foots. We're monitoring every move. Will they say anything? Um, will they get arrested? Will they, you know, come clean? Will they share more information? What's next for them? Uh, it's, we're gonna, we're, we're in the more like the, um, human trends aspect of this situation where, you know, we'll see what they do. Will they just go, life goes on with the Proudfoots and Chris just gets, goes back to work and Katie goes back to work and they kind of wait for this all to die down and they try to think that this is going to go away, um, we obviously have not seen them search. We haven't seen them do. They didn't even search those that first week. Um, and it, one thing that's interesting too, I just want to say that, you know, that critical time frame around when when Katie discovered um, Sebastian not in his room out a little after six a.m. Chris says on, uh, you know, Chris says that he called law enforcement at six twenty. It six twenty came out of his mouth. So you got six a.m. to six twenty. You also have Katie saying that. She immediately, a couple minutes later, calls Chris to say she can't find him and stuff like that. And made me wonder, right? You come in, notice your child missing at, you know, at a time frame. Would you panic and go crazy like that and call your other significant others who's at a job, supposedly at a job far away doing his own thing, you know, with work? Would you go bother someone three minutes into not finding somebody? I think... I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, 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 it doesn't sit right for me. That, that time doesn't even sit right for me either. You would think that you would look around at least more uh, like 15, 20 minutes, look around, look around, look around, just make sure you everything. Okay. You know, just look, I mean, within three minutes, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Chris needs a poly. Chris needs a poly. Maybe he took, maybe, <clears throat> maybe he took one. He's just saying that he, he did. He said he did before. <coughs> Allergies. I had a flat tire last night. Oh, I love the cities. I had a flat tire last night. Driving around thousands of miles all over the place. Boom! Tire goes flat. Pulling a gas station. I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be stuck here. Kind of like this hood bad neighborhood. I'm thinking, oh man. So I look for a tire place. Everything's closed. So I call up this mobile tire guy, right? Love the cities. 
This dude comes up in a U-Haul van with four tires and just basically jacks my, my, my car up. Play a little premium. It wasn't that bad. Pay a little premium. And he puts on a tire. Probably stolen tire. I hope not. But I get my tire like fixed within like, it's kind of like a pit stop. A NASCAR pit stop. I just called up this guy and he was just like, yeah, I can come up. Where are you at? Comes up with a little moment. Puts air in tire. Boom. Back in the game. So kudos to those cities. They got to do that in the suburbs because I was planning on getting a hotel and then have to go to like, like Tire Kingdom the next day. It was pretty cool. And I cashed after him. I said, do you take cash app? Yeah. And he's like, can you do me a favor? Can you give me a review? What was his name too? Hold on. I'll tell you his name. This guy's name. He was a good guy. Nice guy. He's, he's actually has a legit business. Daniel Oguati. Daniel Oguati. I gave him a $15 tip too. Daniel Oguati. Yeah, man. Kudos to him. Shout out to him. Good work. And that was dark and scary. You know, you know, you can't. And I, you know, I have stuff in my car. Yeah, I got a computer. And I got all types of tripod and equipment and everything like that. We're covering Sebastian. We're going to do other things too, though. We're on this case. We're on, uh, you know, I want to maybe talk about the missing individual, Caleb. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, someone share some information in the chat. If you know what I'm talking about, Texas. Uh, there's other cases that still need awareness. People are asking, what am I going to um, Baltimore? What's going on in Baltimore? Uh, I don't think there's anything that really needs to be shared in Baltimore. There is a lot of media cameras that are, uh, you know, propped at that, you know, people wanted to meet. I got a lot of people that sent me, um, you know, about Baltimore, about wanting to see what's going on there. But I think there's that's a media market. There's a lot of things going on there. So I don't think that should be live streamed. Uh, that it would be good for us because you can just see it. You know, there's lots of stuff already out there. It's kind of like if, you know, we go to places where no one else goes. We go to different places uh, when it comes to missing people. JLR investigates, but I enjoyed the chat this morning. We're going to keep Sebastian's name out there. We're on it. Join our Facebook group. And when new information comes out, we're monitoring who's who. We're monitoring what's going on. We're monitoring who you know, is around. We're monitoring what's happening. We're seeing what's going on. Uh, the Proudfoots, I could probably say, unless Katie and Christopher are taking some sleeping medication, they probably can't sleep. Um, they know that people, the, the, you know, people are not letting the foot off the gas. They got the boots on their neck, boots on the ground. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure they didn't know how the extent of what they got themselves into. I thought, you know, they probably thought that they thought this was just going to their people were going to accept their story that a, a a a child just walked away as as if it was a runaway and kid run away everyone forgot you know put Sebastian out there but man oh man i think their master plan backfired and i think they're going to be in big 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 trouble soon all right boots on the ground jlr investigates we'll talk soon stay tuned have a great day everyone be safe when new something breaks with this case i'm on it have a good day. Bye.